الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله الذي عز أف ما حميده جميع خلقه كما يحبه ويرضاه سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم جعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وذكر في الكتاب إبراهيم إنه كان صديقا نبيا وقال الله أيضا ولقد آتينا إبراهيم رشده من قبل وكنا به عالمين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أفضل الجهاد أن تقول كلمة الحق عند سلطان جار صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاكدين ومن الشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Indeed all praises are for Allah and we praise Allah and we glorify Allah Allah Al-Ahad Allah who is the one Allah as samad Allah the eternal, the absolute Lam yalid wa lam yulad Allah begets not nor is he begotten Wa lam yakullahu kufu wa nahad There is nothing and no one to compare to Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Aziz Allah is mighty and powerful Allah is Al-Hakim Allah is the one who is full of wisdom Allah is Al-Ghani The one whose richness does never diminish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ar-Rahman Allah the most gracious, the most kind Allah ar-Rahim, the most compassionate Allah al-Alim, the one who has full knowledge of everything Allah al-Khabir, the one who is well aware and well acquainted Allah al-Basir, Allah the one who sees our each and every move Allah al-Sami, the one who witnesses and the one who listens and hears even to the secret within our hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is He who has sent Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Al-Mudathir, Al-Muzammil, Al-Adl al-Ameen, Al-Sadiq, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rahmatul al-Alameen So that He will take people from the depths of darkness And He will bring them into the nur of Allah, into the light My dear brothers and my dear sisters the praising of Allah, the glorification of Allah, the hand of Allah. We cannot praise Allah enough. We cannot glorify Allah enough. Allah tells us in His holy book, the book which we profess, the book which we bear testimony. We bear testimony to the fact that this book, in it there is no doubt whatsoever. In this book, it is Hudallil Muttaqin. There is guidance show for those people who have fear for Allah. In this book is the guidance of the entire world. Allah tells us in this book, وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَوْدِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٍ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبَعَةُ أَبْحُرٍ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ If all the trees were turned into pens and if all the oceans were made into ink together with that added to God seven other oceans made out of ink and they were to write the glorification of Allah the hand of Allah the praise of Allah Allahu Akbar the words of Allah will never become exhausted we cannot praise Allah enough Allah is mighty and Allah is powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us Allah has placed us in the best of all ummah the Ummah of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Ummah which came last 
but the Ummah which will rise first on the day of Qiyamah. The Prophet which came last, but the Prophet which will rise first on the day of Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the best of all deen. He has given us the deen which is known as al-Islam. The deen which is a complete way of life. The deen which Allah for himself has perfected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the best in everything. Look at our bodies. Look at our shapes. لَقَدْ قَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ We have already created mankind in the most excellent form, in the best mold, in the best shape. Allah is telling us this. And Allah, we did not do anything, but we have earned the best of all titles. We are Muslims. Look at the world today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Every single person we see in the world, one out of every four people in the world today, one out of every four people in the world today is a Muslim. Allah Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that he, he is going to cause this deen to flourish. Allah has made that promise. Look at what is going on in the world today with all the negativeness, with all the bad things that we see happening. Whether it's the media is portraying, portraying a different image as, as to what is happening in the Islamic world. Still, that does not stop Islam from growing. Because truth is something, when truth comes, falsehood takes aside. One out of every four people in the world today is a Muslim. Allahu Akbar. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam made a call. There was no believers at that time. No believers. As a matter of fact, as a little boy, Allah mentions in the Quran about this youngster. This little boy, some of the narration stated he was only about seven years old. About seven years old. What is Allah saying about this little boy? وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدَهُ مِنَ قَبْلَ That we, we have bestowed in the past on Ibrahim alayhi salam his portion of guidance. وَكُنَّا بِهِ عَالِمِينَ And Allah is saying we were well acquainted with him. In regards to his iman, in regard to his beliefs. As a very little boy, we know of the hardships that he went through. We see the barakah and we see the benefits of what is taking place today in the land of Makkah. Throughout the world, people are slaughtering animals. Commemorating this great sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. But how did it all begin? How is it that Muslims throughout the world is celebrating this? As a matter of fact, this is the bigger and the greater of the two festivals that Muslims celebrate. Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Eid al-Adha is the greater of the two festivals. But we treat it with less importance. Eid al-Adha is celebrated throughout the Muslim world for three days. Three days. This is how great this festival is. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, it started at a point. A young man, single to his call, he grew up in such a society, in such a community, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made mankind the best to worship him, but they reduced themselves to the lowest of the low. Instead, these people... Who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given skill and ability, they became what we call worshippers to the stones. They started to worship idols, making it with their own hands, carving wood, carving stones, making these idols and worshipping them. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was in the midst of all these people. Worse than that, his own father. His own father was a maker of these idols. Making it as one. But now he's earning a livelihood from these idols. He is selling them. Selling these idols. Once Ibrahim alayhi salam, he looked at his father and he was carving this big idol. 
This big idol. And subhanallah, it has some huge ears. Huge ears. Ibrahim alayhi salam looked at his dad and he says, Oh my father, why is it that this one is different from the rest? Why does he have these big ears? What used to happen? These people, they used to come and put in an order. They used to order a god. So the not so rich one, the poor people, they used, to, they used to order the small ones. And the rich people, they used to order the bigger ones. So when they would ask for anything, the bigger the need is the bigger the God. Subhanallah. What was the reason for the big ears? So that whatever you ask for, it's going to hear. It's going to hear, it's going to hear you better. Ibrahim alayhi salam is trying to reason with his father about this big idol, these big ears. Why do you worship these things, oh daddy? Why do you make these things? Why do you sell these things? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Samir, Allah is the one who hears, Allah listens, Allah sees. Allah is the one who gives life, Allah is the one who takes life, Allah is in control. Why don't you worship Allah, the one God? This is a little boy we are speaking about here. Eh? Time and time again, the Quran mentions in 70 different places in the Quran, 70 different places, spread out over 25 different surahs about this young boy called Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah loves him so much that Allah even revealed and named a surah after this young boy. Ibrahim alayhi salam. It did not start when he was an old man. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam got revelation at the age of 40. 40. His mission to call people towards Allah started. His prophethood started. His nabuwat started at 40. This young boy, Allah is saying, at a very young age, we had already guided his heart. Already guided his heart. He is calling people, calling people, so much calling, he called these people. Until they never ever listen. No one believed in Ibrahim alayhi salam from amongst his community. So much so we know the incident, how he broke all the idols and he left the axe hanging on the big one. They took him and they threw him into this big fire. We know, the, we know of the entire story and kissa. Such a huge fire. The Mufassirin has stated that it was so high, any birds flying above, they were burnt. So huge this fire was, that in order to throw more supplies of wood into that fire, they had to build a catapult and put the wood inside there and fling it across. They couldn't go close. And it was in this that they put Ibrahim alayhi salam to throw him into that fire. The first lesson that Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam taught us, taught us at this very young age. Subhanallah. He says, Hasbanallah wa ni'am al -wakil. You want to kill me? <laughs> no problem. If I stand for truth, you do what you have to do. My Lord is enough for me. He is the best disposer of all affairs. This is the first lesson. Sometimes we go through these hardships. It might not be for Deen. It might not be for this way of life. It might be for any other thing. But, Hasbun Allah wa Niyam al Wakil. Get that into our system. Get these words into our vocabulary. Get these words into our lives. Learn it and say it throughout your life. Hasbun Allah wa Niyam al Wakil. These were the words of this young man, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Subhanallah, he spent 40 days inside of that fire. Subhanallah, he walked out without even a hair being touched. After he came out of that fire, one person, one person believed in Ibrahim alayhi salam. One person. A, a young man by the name of Lut alayhi salam. His nephew. His nephew. One person. Imagine that. Sometimes we lose heart. This is Ibrahim we are speaking about. We are speaking about a prophet of Allah. Calling these people towards Allah. No one took his message. 
except for his little nephew, Lut alayhi salatu was salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam, throughout his life, he was faced with hardships. Throughout his life, he leaves this place, he makes hijrah, he goes to another land. He goes to another land and another land, people they are worshipping the stars. He has to debate with other people. He speaks to Namrud, the king of those times. Namrud, he meets with Ibrahim, they are having debate. This is what Allah blessed him with. With the gift of debating, bringing reason, teaching people logic, showing them. Namrud, he is in the presence of this king. And he's, the conversation takes place in Surah Baqarah, it is mentioned. Allah is saying, Alam tara ila ladhi haja Ibrahim fi rabbihi an atahu Allahu al-mulk. Have you not turned your, your vision? Have you not looked? Have you not seen about that person who disputed about his Lord in regards to, in regards with Ibrahim alayhi salam because Allah had given him a lot of power. Allah had given him kingship. Allah had given him this mulk, this great kingdom. He disputed with Ibrahim alayhi salam. What was the dispute about? Ibrahim alayhi salam stood in front of this man. People are worshipping this man. They are worshipping the idols. They are worshipping the stones and the woods. Worshipping human beings now. Ibrahim alayhi salam stood in front of this man. And he began to debate. He says to this man, إِذَا قَالَ Ibrahim, Ibrahim says to this man, رَبِّيَ الَّذِي يُحْيِي وَيُمِيت People are worshipping you, but not me. Because my Lord is that one who gives life and he takes life. My Lord is such a Lord, he gives life and he will take life. He gives death as well. This man who was this king, at that point in time, he had some prisoners. He says, okay. He says, Ana uhi wa umit. I give life and I take life too. This was the mentality of him. He calls his guard, bring me those two prisoners. He kills one of them and he set the other one free. He said, look, I give life and I took life. This was the reason with these people. Ibrahim alayhi salam, in his mind he's thinking that who is it that gives life? It's bringing something out of existence into existence. These are two people we are speaking about already there. He was so smart and so intelligent. He says to this man, this king, okay, this is how you want to play the game. Eh? He says, For in Allah yati bi shamsi min al mashriq, fati biha min al maghrib. He says, My Lord, he brings the sun from the east, you bring it from the west. You want to play smart? My Allah, he brings the sun from the east. You bring it from the west. He was, un, he was defeated. He was dumbfounded. He didn't know what to say again. Preaching this way of life to people, bringing them, trying to help them to understand this one Allah. It didn't start when Ibrahim salam was a big man. It started as a youth, as a young man. And my dear brothers, Sometimes we fail to train our children like this in teaching them about the values of their deen, teaching them about this ilm that Allah has given to us, that so much so, sometimes people tell us about Islam, we don't even know. We don't know how to answer them. We don't know how to defend our own deen. We don't know. Ibrahim is showing us the different things that he had to go through as a little boy. Until he reached to that stage when he called people, called people, nobody accepting his deen. He went to Misr, he went to Egypt, he went to Iraq, he went to Palestine, he went to Sham. Nobody, just himself, his wife Sarah, and his nephew Lut. Nobody. So much calling, so much preaching until Allah, Allah for himself. Allah says to Ibrahim salam, that, O oh Ibrahim, you are an Ummah, you are an entire nation. You, one man. Because of these different things that you went through in life. 
One man has been called an entire ummah. Imagine that. So much different tests and trials. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Again, no children. Allah gave him children. Ismail alayhi salam to Hajara. Ishaq to, to Sarah. And subhanallah, Allah commanded him again, tested him again. Take this boy and sacrifice him. The whole message about this entire, or the whole kissa, the whole lesson about this entire sacrifice, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it comes in one word, and the word is about submission. Submission. The lesson coming out of the entire narration about Ibrahim alayhi salam is submission. How much are you and I, how much are we ready to submit to Allah? How much are we ready to surrender to Allah? That Allah, you is the one. You are the one who have given it to us. You are the one who have created us. You are the one who have given everything to us. You are the one who have perfected us. You give life. You take life. You give health. You bring sickness. Allah, everything is in your hands. How much are we ready to sacrifice and submit to Allah? This, was, this is the kissa. This is the lesson that is coming out from the story. Of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Both of them father and son. Falamma aslama. When both of them surrendered. Both of them surrendered. In the plains of Mina. This little boy with his father. Both of them surrender. Not one. The two. How much are we ready to sacrifice and to submit for Allah? Look at what Allah is telling us in the Quran. وَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِنَ الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنْ ذَكَرِنَ أَوْ أُنْثَىٰ Whoever does good righteous deeds, whether he be a man or a woman, whether he be a man or a woman, but, but he is a mukmin, a believer. A believer. And we have to understand this term, who is a believer? A true believer in Allah. Who is a true believer? Not everybody who say they believe, they believe. Allah gives us the description of who a believer is. And Allah puts them into a category by themselves. And Allah says what? إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وُجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ That only those are believers. When Allah is mentioned, when they hear the word Allah, their hearts begin to shake. They begin to tremor. They begin to feel afraid. How many times we hear people slandering and backbiting. We see people in all sorts of evil and wickedness. And we say, brother, fear Allah. Fear Allah what? It does go through one ear and it comes through the other ear. Only those are believers, Allah is saying. When Allah is mentioned, their hearts begin to feel afraid. They begin to shake. They begin to tremble. That is one quality. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتُهُمْ إِمَانًا When Allah's verses are recited unto them, when they hear the verses of the Quran, they hear the ahadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their iman starts to go up. They don't remain one place all the time. Their iman starts to be lifted. There is an increase in their iman. That is the second thing. And the third thing, وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And they only put their trust and reliance upon Allah. Only upon Allah. Allah is saying two other qualities. These people, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ They are the people who will establish prayer. They will establish salah. Part of the establishment of salah entitles them to be being called a believer in Allah. And whatever Allah has blessed them with, they spend it for Allah. They spend it for Allah. Allah is saying now, Ula'ika humul mukminuna Those people, they are the true believers. They are the true believers. What does this verse tell us? In the reality of it, they are true believers. And they are not true believers. There are some who say that they believe. If they fall into this, this category, these five categories here, they are considered to be true believers in Allah. 
And then some, we just have the lip sync. I believe. Are you praying five times a day? I will start someday. Do you feel fear for Allah when you're slandering people and backbiting people and committing evil deeds? Do you listen to what Allah is saying in the Holy Quran? Do you rely on your car? Do you rely on your business? Do you rely on the wife and the children and the husband? What do you rely on? Where do you put your trust and your reliance? If it's not on Allah, then we are, we are not into that category. We are out of that category. Only those are true believers. Only those, their hearts tremble when they hear Allah. Their iman is increased when the verses of Allah recited to them. They trust and rely on Allah and Allah alone. They establish prayer and they spend from what Allah has given to them. Ibrahim alayhi salam fulfilled it all. All. Allahu Akbar. Allah is telling us in the, in the glorious Quran about those people about those people, the true believers, Allah is saying, فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ Allah will admit these people, Allah will cause them to enter into Jannah. وَلَا يُزْلَمُونَ نَقِيرًا No injustice, not even the amount of the speck on the back of a date, date seed. Not even a speck on a date seed. No injustice whatsoever to them. Then Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنَ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْحَهُ لِلَّهِ And whoever, and who can be better in this deen? Who can be better in this way of life? Than the one who submits himself to Allah. وَهُوَ مُحْسِنْ And he is a doer of good. Who can be better? Who can be better than the one who submits himself, surrenders himself in this way of life which is known as Islam? And he is a doer of good. What Amillata Ibrahim Hanifa? And then he follows the path of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Then he follows the path of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then Allah ends that verse by saying, What Allahu Ibrahim Khalila? And Allah indeed took Ibrahim as an intimate friend. When we can submit for Allah, when we can surrender to Allah, and everything is about Allah, and we begin to perform acts of righteousness, now we fall into this category. Allah is going to also take us as friends. Allah is going to take us as friends also. But when we only hear it, and it goes through one ears, and it comes through the other ears, and we hear the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam every year, and his son Ismail alayhi salam every year, and the wife Hajara every year, and it goes through one ear and it comes through the other ear, and next year we come back and we say, same thing again, boy. But when we look at our lives, we see, same person again. I ain't even increase a little bit in Iman. I ain't even learn a little bit more about Islam. I ain't learn to read a little bit of Quran. Nothing. But we are saying what? Same lesson again. <laughs> We have to move. Ibrahim alayhi salam moved from step to step. This is why if you would notice at every different juncture in his life, the imtihan, the ibtila, the test, it became even more severe. It became bigger and bigger and bigger until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, this is your prize now. This is your prize. What is your prize? Take this ram. Sacrifice this ram. You, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, you will be in the seventh heaven of Allah. Where did the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw him? When he went on the mi'raj, he saw him leaning on the Kaaba in the heavens. Leaning on the Kaaba in the heavens. Allahu Akbar. Seventh heaven. This is the elevation that Allah had given to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah is going to give it to us too. Allah is going to give it to us too. Don't ever think for once that I alone, I alone, I am going through hardships alone. No. Don't even think for once that this is because Allah doesn't like us. No. Allah loves us so he brings these tests and trials to us. Allah loves us. This is why he does that. Allah wants to bring our iman higher and higher. Allah wants to pull us closer and closer. So Allah takes the things from us that we love. But sometimes 
The reason why Allah does that is because we for our own selves, if we have to do it willingly, we can't, we are not able to do it. We don't do it. How much times we see opportunities coming up in the houses of Allah. Spending a part of Allah, masajid is being built, a masjid is being built. You need money for this, you need money for that, for Allah's house. The roof needs to be changed, carpets need to be bought, this needs to be painted, the toilet needs to be fixed. And everybody zip up their pockets. People have to come out and ask and ask and ask. For what? For what Allah has given to us. We won't do it willingly. Ibrahim alayhi salam did it wholeheartedly. This is why the Qurbani also is based about that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when you do your Qurbani, do it with an open heart. Don't go into the abattwas today. That is all the meat I get. <laughs> That is all you meet I get. So much money I pay for a share. Do it with an open heart. Don't fight. Don't quarrel. No. The Hajj is about that. We are not performing the Hajj. Do it with an open heart. A clean heart. A pure heart. That Allah, I am doing this for you. I am only doing this for you. And when we do it only for Allah, we will fall under the code. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. My prayer, my service of sacrifice, my living, my dying, it's only for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. If we have not yet made that intention, let us make our, make our intention today. That everything, inshallah, we intend to do in life, to gain Allah's pleasure, let it only be done for Allah and Allah alone. Only for Allah and Allah alone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May He have mercy upon us. May Allah show us the truth of this sacrifice, this qurbani. May Allah help us in, in preparing our hearts, in preparing our amal, in order so that we will go into the next world, reaping the benefits of all the sacrifices that we made on the face of this earth. And we pray when we stand on the day of Qiyamah, we will stand with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the prophets, with the righteous ones, with the martyrs, the shuhada, the saliheen. May Allah give us good in this world. May Allah give us better in the hereafter. And may Allah save us from the torments of the hellfire. والآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين